All right, all right, all right. What is up, guys? Your friendly programmer here, back with another video. Today, we're going to be implementing collisions for our player object, um, specifically collision detection. And for those of you who are sort of new to game development and are not too familiar with collision detection, I'm going to briefly explain what it is exactly. So you can think of collision detections as exactly what it sounds like. So it's the, it's the detection of collisions between different, in our case, game objects. And so when a player collides with an enemy, the way we're going to know that the, the collision actually happened is through collision detection. And if we have other game objects like a floor or a, a block, um, we don't want the player to just go through the, through the blocks or through the floor. We want them to, when they collide, to not go through the, the floor or the, or the blocks. And so that's sort of what collision detection does for us. The way we're going to implement collision detection is by having four different segments to our, our object. So you can think of our player as a rectangle and we're going to have, I guess, sub bounding boxes within that rectangle that indicate whether it collides with an object underneath it, above it, or to the sides. And the reason why we'd want that sort of detection is one, to to make the collision a little bit more accurate so we can change the size of the left and the right and the top and the bound boxes so that it it fits our player better than just a rectangle. But another reason, and specifically for this game, is so that we can detect when an object hits underneath our player. So in this case, if Mario jumps on top of an enemy, we want to be able to detect that it jumped on top of it instead of it colliding on the side or above it. And so, and, and the significance of having that is so that when you, when you jump on top of an object or you jump on top of an enemy, um, it gets destroyed. But when you get hit on the sides or the top, then Mario, um, loses health. And so with that brief explanation of how we're going to implement collision detection, let's go ahead and start building it. So the way we want to um, build it, as you said, is to have the, the top, bottom, right and left bounding, box, uh, bounding boxes. So let's go ahead and implement that. So let's do public rectangle get bounds top and let's go ahead and return null for now and let's repeat this for our right and left side as well the rectangle get bounds right and let's just return null for now and let's do public rectangle get bounds left and let's just go ahead and turn null from now. And let's also create a method called show bounds. And this is going to show all of these bounds that we eventually create. And so let's go ahead and do private void show bounds. And in here, let's go ahead and pass in a graphics G. And let's go ahead in here and do graphics 2D G2D is equal to graphics 2D and let's do G and let's go ahead and implement graphics 2D and let's do G dot set color to color dot red and down here, let's do G2D draw get bounds. 
and let's do g2d dot draw get bounds right g2d dot draw get bounds left and g2d dot draw get bounds top now you might think that um, this is kind of we're, we're missing the bottom but for us this get bounds is going to represent the get bounds bottom um, initially this was a method that came from the game object class so you can see here we have this get bounds but after some thought um, I figured that this would be a better way to implement it um, by having four different bounds so that you can you know detect different types of collisions and so it could be worth fixing this um, to make it a little cleaner and make a little bit more sense by having all four of these methods in our uh, game object class. For now, I guess this is fine. We can fix it maybe in a, in a different episode. But for now, you can think of get bounds as the get bounds bottom. Okay, and then up here, let's go ahead and do g dot set color. And let's go ahead and set a color to color dot um, yellow and g dot fill rectangle equal to um, int get x int get y and let's do int width and int height and let's do show bounds so well, let's pass in g okay so these two lines up here they're just going to be temporary code so that we can see our bounding box a little bit better um, this is going to represent our so so just to walk through this code so we're going to set the color to yellow and then we're going to fill the rectangle for the color um we're going to go ahead and fill the rectangle to this color and we're going to set the x and the y position for a rectangle to the width and the height of our player so this is basically representing the rectangle for our player and then on top of that, we're going to go ahead and show our bounds. And these are going to be the four bounds. Um, so, so to go over this, so we have our graphics um, that we pass in for show bounds. And then we're going to go ahead and cast it to Graphics 2D. Now, Graphics 2D um, has different uh, methods that the the graphics class doesn't have and so we want to cast it um, to this graphics 2d so that we can call these draw methods here but we're going to set the color to red and then we're going to go ahead and draw our four bounds to the screen so what you'll see in the end is a yellow um, rectangle representing our player rectangle and then our, our player and then we're going to have our four bounding boxes representing the four collision bounding boxes um, for that player. Okay, so now let's go ahead and fill out these get bounds, get bound top, right and left methods. So I'm going to write out the code for this and then I'll explain the math because there's some math involved in, in um, determining where we want to place these bounding boxes and what we want the dimensions of it to be. So let's go ahead and start with this bottom bounding box. So let's do new rectangle and let's go ahead and do um, get x plus get width divided by 2 minus get width 
and divide it by four. Um, and let's go ahead and do this, this, and this. And let's go ahead and put this into parentheses and cast it to an int. And let's go ahead and go to the next line. Let's do get y plus get height divided by 2. And let's actually remove these parentheses so it doesn't get confusing. And let's go ahead and do a parentheses around this whole thing. And let's do a cast to an int again. And let's go ahead and do int, I cast an int again and get width and divide that by two. And let's go ahead and do uh, cast to int again and do get height and divide it by two. So <clears throat> first you'll notice that there's a bunch of um, cast to ints. The reason why we need to do this is because this rectangle takes in four integers and these are floats and when you do the calculation with floats it ends up being a float and then it's a type mismatch so we get an error. So that's why we need the four ints here. And the rectangle method takes in an x position, a y position, a width, and a height to to uh, lay out the dimensions and the position of the rectangle. And so this first one is going to be the x position, this is going to be the y position, this is going to be the width and the height. And so to explain the x position calculation going on here, so we're going to start by getting the x position of the box. Now this is going to give us the left edge of the box. And then after that we want to um, add it by half of the width so now the x position is going to be half a width to the right of the left edge and then we're going to move it back by a fourth and so let's just go to paint real quick and so you can sort of imagine we have a box here 